Hello, everybody. Welcome back. In the last episode, we implemented Contentful's preview API using GraphQL variables. Currently, everything is depending on this variable, is preview though. And I have to say that I'm not the biggest fan of that. So let's change that. And I already included a checkbox here that should toggle the preview and the production data state of this React application. So to get rid of this hard-coded variable, what we have to do is we have to get in use state again because we are now dealing with local state. So we can now define, we can call use state here and we say we start with a falsy value because preview mode should be, should be disabled initially. And this returns then the state variable and the getter for this variable. With this now we can get rid of is preview here already and we pass the new stateful as is preview variable to our use contentful hook. So when we now go to our checkbox, we have to add two things that we want to, to be checked if is preview is truthy, but also if this checkbox changes, what we want to do is that we want to call set is preview with the toggled is preview value. So with this, I think we already made it nicely dynamic. So let's tackle this one. Cool. And just to prove that it is actually working, when we're not toggling the checkbox, we see that we're calling the GraphQL endpoint with different data here. I would like though to have published and preview data on top of each other. So let's figure out how we could do this. So I'm going over to graphical and let's figure out how this could work. So what I would like to do is that I would like to have a person, but I would like to include it in two states. One should be the published state. So this would should be a published person. And this one here should be a preview version. Or well, let's call it preview person. This is why I removed already the preview argument. And let's rename this. So let's do person preview here. And I only want to include this field person preview if this query variable is preview is truthy. And the way to do this is to use a GraphQL directive. So what I can do here is I can call include and I can say that I only want to include this field if is preview is truthy. So with this, we could now make this request and we see here that we have a person, but we don't have a person preview response. When we now turn this one on, we could make the same request and here we now have a person and here we have person preview. And here we see preview data and in the person we see published data, which I think is pretty, pretty cool. But now we have a lot of duplication here. So let's clean that up just a little bit. Let's uh, fragment person fields on person to not repeat our field selection here. Then we can go in, we can grab these fields. We can paste them in here. Now we can make that a little bit nicer and we can say, person fields here, and we can clean that up with person fields here. Nice. Let's prettify everything a little bit. I think that looks like a pretty nice query. Let's copy everything. Let's go back to our React application. Let's replace this query here with our new query. Bam, bam, bam. Here we go. And what I would like now to do is that I would to like to duplicate this component here, the person component, which is responsible for all this dark area here. And I want to, to use the person preview, but we have to be a little bit careful here because when we're not running in preview mode, then person preview will not be available. So I will only render it if person preview is available. And now we're not fetching in yet. So let's grab it from the data. So we can go in here and we can say person preview. And the last thing that is missing is that I prepared some custom styling, uh, which puts the two components on top of each other. So with this, let's see, it's compiling. What we do now is that when we toggle this one, we see that we have two components on top of each other and we can figure out what will change when someone hits publish. And this is what I wanted to show you in this episode. We learned about GraphQL directives and I see you in the next episode.